And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at the Conquest of Kumanjaro, which is the newest expansion for Mage Wars. Mage Wars is one of my favorite games, a two-player battle of mages. It comes with four mages in the original game. We have a priest, a priestess, a beast master, a wizard, and a, a warlock. Well, they came out with one expansion, added two more mages. Now they've come out with a second expansion. This one, however, does not introduce necessarily two new mages, but two alternate mages uh, to ones that came in the base game. Let's look. We're gonna look at the two new uh, mages that come in this set. Now these are variations on the original ones. So instead of having a male, uh, Beastmaster. We now also have a female Beastmaster and we'll have a male priest instead of a female priest. So let's look at the, the female Beastmaster. Why would I want to use her? Well, first of all, she's fast. That's sprinting. She's a fast trait, which is a great thing. Wounded Prey is okay. Basically, you can stick this Wounded Prey marker on somebody who has taken a wound and then everyone has more attack against him to finish him off. Seems awfully cruel, but well, whatever. But also it's interesting because she's a ranged plus one trait. So give her a bow and she can be very useful. Mix that bow with sprinting and I very much like having her in the game. Then we have the priest here, the male priest, who is has the Holy Avenger. Now the Holy Avenger is one that I like a lot. This is one of my favorite extra things that you can add to somebody. Basically what you can do is you take this Holy Avenger and you can put it on any non-legendary holy creature. So if I look through the non-legendary holy creatures, let's say there's a guardian angel. This is one that comes in this set. So I add holy adventure to it. I have to play the level plus one. So this one would actually be a four to add it to this guy. But it gives him an extra five life. Also, melee two and piercing one if he's attacking somebody who hit myself. So I very much... The Holy Avenger is a cool reason to take the Priest, but also, on top of that, when this guy does an attack that does light damage, he can burn the other person, place burn tokens on them. So, very useful, and I like him way better than the other Priest. Not as good at healing, per se. He's more of a fighting Priest, but hey, he can do that and heal, which makes a fun combo. So let's take a look at some of the other cards that come in this set. We'll start with the Spike Pit because, well, that just cracks me up. I really like the Spike Pit. Uh, when there's a non-flying creature, you say, oh, here's a Spike Pit. It does four damage, and there's a chance that, well, a very high chance that your opponent will be stuck. It's not a cheap thing to pull off, but just the fact that Spike Pits are in the game now makes people really afraid to go into different zones and makes flying a much better thing. So if you have a deck that has a lot of flying creatures in, Spike Pit's one I like to use. Lots of new creatures. I already mentioned the Guardian Angel. It's good to have more angels. like the angels a lot. The Giant Wolf Spider uh, not only is a mesmerizing beast of horror, because if you saw a giant spider, I think that would scare most of us, but he also has Psychic Immunity, which is a very cool thing and has a chance to basically web your opponents. Uh, Makunda... I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Actually, I don't really care. Uh, but it's a legendary one that gives all your other cats piercing plus one. Now, there's not that many other cats in the game. But still, instead of having a wolf beast master deck now, you can have a cat one, I suppose. And this guy is a pretty powerful guy in his own right. So I like him because he can cause bleed, uh, which is essentially uh, each turn they're going to take one damage, each upkeep. So they can... They can heal bleed, but it's going to basically keep wounding them. So he has that ability I like. The Dire Wolf is a more powerful wolf rather than the regular wolf and helps you fill up your deck, like I said, with wolves. And also he's Bloodthirsty plus two. Great thing. The Screech Harpy. Harpies have always been a disgusting, annoying creature. These are no different. Uh, flying, very useful, and has the opportunity to uh, daze your opponent. Then another Dwarf who can intercept which is a very useful thing. And when he's guarding, he's plus three to defense roll. So this is basically a guard. Uh, not the only guard in the game, that guardian angel is also a very useful guard. And then we have Galador, a legendary creature with lightning shooting out of his, his things. He actually can do a short ranged lightning attack and very powerful in his own right, which is why he's fairly expensive to get out. But you'll want to put him out, I think, for more thematic reasons than anything else. 
So then there's some new uh, pieces of equipment. I really like the Sunfire Amulet, which gives you one life every turn, a regeneration thing, basically. Uh, that's nice to add. The Dispel Wand is one of the bigger new things that's been added to the game. You know, there's been a lot of wands, and which one do you want to use? Here you can get rid of revealed enchantments, or you can... Uh, even look at hidden enchantments that are face down. So this can be a very useful uh, wand, even if it does bring uh, shades of Harry Potter to the set. Uh, reflex boots, uh, another to spell on. Eagle Claw boots gives you unmovable and climbing traits. Okay, great, so you can climb over walls. But unmovable, there's a lot of things, especially when fighting the Psychic Mage, they'll throw you around. Unmovable will keep you from being tossed around. A new hunting bow, this is fantastic because you can, you know, it's you give it to the new Beastmaster. So now that she has this, it's an extra piercing plus one, can cause bleed. So very, very neat. Um, if this is the bow for the Beastmaster, this was put in the set for her. I mean, really, that's all there is to it. So it's the first, it was the very first card I added when I built her deck, which incidentally, the rules do come with new decks that you can add these to. Although if you're gonna to wanna to keep them separate from your old decks, you're gonna to have to buy some of those core spells because you're gonna to wanna to use a lot of the same spells other people have. Uh, the Warlord has a battle cry and there's a drain soul for the Dark Mage. This adds tainted markers. And basically, you can't heal these, but they count as three hit points. They're poison. They're real pain in the neck. And when you cast them on the other person, you will gain life from taking it from them. So that's a really powerful, annoying ability and makes the Dark Mage really that much more evil. There's a new water spell, a surging wave, which has the opportunity to push and knock people down. Unless, of course, you're wearing those climbing boots. We have Divine Might, which gives your traits the ethereal uh, ability. So that's a, a, another good thing to add to people. And then uh, enchantment transfusion and another a healing charm. Basically, when you hit the person with the healing charm, they'll roll four attack dice and they heal instantly when you get hit. So I don't know how useful these are, but it does allow your healing mage to stick it on somebody and then move away from them and they can kind of heal on their own. I don't know. The more of these enchantments, the better life is. So that's basically what's in this set. Uh, a whole bunch of tokens are added, a sheet of tokens with, you know, if you have range plus one or whatever, here's the stuck ability that was added. Lots of tainted uh, slam bleed tokens that are added to this set. Now, I didn't show you every card that came in this set. You didn't see the troll, for example, or the gargoyle. Both those pretty cool. I love regenerating trolls in my games, but hopefully we get it. There's three of each of these cards in this game. There's 106 new spell cards in here all together with that sheet of counters and the two different beast masters and mage cards and things. Um, what do I think about this? Well, this is kind of one of those expansions which I enjoyed. I wouldn't say I was like, oh, I must have this. Well, first of all, I love getting new spells for Mage Wars all the time. I'm always, so that, I was eager to see what the new ones were. The new mages are, are great. It's nice to have alternate versions, although I'm kind of the guy who's like, well, what new mages do we have? But I do like, I actually like both of these better than, well, I don't know. I definitely like the priest better than the priestess. Priestess is much better at healing, but the priest is healing and he's gonna punch you with his holy light. I like that. The new beast masteress, or beast master, female beast master. I kind of like her equally with the other guy. I like the, the the guy's initial. You know, he really pushed getting those animals out there as fast as can. She has that quickness with the shooting the bow, and that's a good addition to the game too. There wasn't too many other spells in here that I was just like, wow, I love that. But I do think that the spell wand is going to be, you're gonna see a lot of that in games as time goes by. The Spike Pit, you're gonna see a lot of games if you play against Tom Vassal, because I've added that to almost all my decks. I just think it's hilarious. Um, and, and, and the creatures are good. Some of the the uh, spell masters, let's say you're a psychic warrior, or you like the psychic mage, or the warlord mage, there's a few cards in here that you'll like, but not as many. But Beastmaster and Holy Spell people, this has a lot more stuff that you will enjoy. A lot of creatures, I'm glad for that. So anyhow, hopefully that gives you this. If you're a fan of the game, you're already going out to buy this anyway. Um, so this is just kind of a heads up on what's in it. Another good expansion for Mage Wars. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.
The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.